I bless you guys with a wonderful day that God has given us once again, our Lord and Savior. Another day he has given us to read another Bible encouragement from him. If it wasn't for him, I would have never been doing this because he called me to do this and I have to do this every single day. Whenever he wants me to do this, I have to do it for him. This is all for him. Glory to him. But today, we are going to read today. Psalms 112. We're going to pray for the word and we'll read Psalms 112. So, let's let's pray. Dear Father God, come to your presence today to thank you for the beautiful word that you have given me and help those in need in this COVID-19 and guide us in the Holy Spirit through our lives and when we read this word, guide us every single minute protect us, protect our families, protect the whole world, forgive us for our sins, forgive the world, everyone for their sins, anything that does not come from you, or anything, anything that does not come from you, we, we rebuke you in your name, and we ask for forgiveness, God, we thank you for another day, hopefully there's another day tomorrow, and we thank you for the word that we're about to read, and guide us in the Holy Spirit when we read this word, and protect the essential workers, because they risk their lives, and those who overcame all COVID-19, praise God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Let's, let's do this. So, if you don't have a Bible, listen along. If you do, read along with me. But anyways, Psalms 112. Praise the Lord. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight is obeying His commands. Their children will be successful everywhere. An entire generation of godly people will be blessed. And their good deeds will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the godly. They are generous, compassionate, and righteous. Good comes to those who lend money generously and conduct their business fairly. Such people will not be overcome by evil. Those who are righteous will be long remembered. They do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to care for them. They are confident and fearless and, and can face their foes triumphantly. They share freely and give generous to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. They will have influence and honor. The wicked will see this and be inf infuriated. They will grind their teeth in anger. They will slick. They will slick away their hopes thwarted. On their hopes thwarted. Amen. Amen. That's a good word. So basically, Psalms one twelve is basically saying, "Pray, praise the Lord." We always have to do that. It says, "Be joyful, people." There's people who fear the Lord are always happy and joyful because, you know, the the Lord is guiding them in the Holy Spirit to do what's right for him so you can have salvation. Because you're doing everything you do, you do it for God. When God tells you to do something, you have to obey him. Because if you don't obey him, like I said yesterday, King, um, King, um, King Saul, right? I, I, was it Saul? Well, anyways, yeah, it was King, it was King Saul. That, that that he disobeyed God and God took away his kingdom and, you know, God, you know, killed him, like I said yesterday. And that's like, you know, if you don't obey God, you're going to end up, you know, whatchamacallit. If you don't obey God, you're going to end up, you know, not, you know, have salvation. That's basically what it's saying. That's why all the time we have to serve God, all the time. Right now I'm looking at Psalms 112 and you have to obey God. Also, this word is so all of God's words is beautiful. But 112 caught my eye when I was reading this. Good comes from generosity. You don't do it because you have to, or you don't do it to show like, oh, 
I, let me do it because this person do it. You don't do it to compete with people. When you lend people money, it doesn't even have to be money. It could be you could lend somebody your mop or you could lend somebody your TV or lend somebody anything that you have of your possessions. You could lend it and share it with your neighbors and friends and family, but you have to do it with generosity. You can't do it because, you know, you are, oh, I have to do it. Like you got you to gotta do it with joy and you got to do it with generosity. And like, you know, that's what God wants us to do when people is in need. We do it out of generosity. Not because, oh, we have to. Like, you have to do it from your heart. Because some people just do it, but they don't do it from the heart. You have to do it from the heart. And God, he wants us to do it for the heart. Because it's important to give people in need and be generous and do it for the heart. Because if you don't do it for people in need, basically you didn't do it for the Lord. Because if the... Like like it says in, in one scripture in the Bible, it says, You didn't feed me food when I asked. You didn't give me this when I asked. So that's why it's bad to, like, you know, deny people in need that's suffering or doesn't have food or even denying a homeless person. If you, if a homeless person, for example, my mom, she told me this example. If a homeless person or somebody asks you $20 and you don't have 20 but you have 10 just give them that $10. Just give it to them because it's something and, you know, that person will be appreciative and God will also be appreciative too. Even even if that person wanted 20 and you gave them 10, it's still something and God will be happy because you gave them something that you have. And that's what all that matters for God. And everything you do, you do it for your salvation. That's why it's the entire generation where it says their children will be successful everywhere. An entire generation of godly people will be blessed. If we're right with the Lord, if we're godly, if we serve God every day and do what we got to do for God, God is going to bring su success in our life, but through the Holy Spirit of what God wants us to do. Because it's different from doing what the flesh wants and then doing what God wants you to do. Because when you do what the flesh, what the hum with the flesh, what you want, things don't go always as planned. But if you always... Be in the Holy Spirit and do what God wants you to do. Everything will go great for you. It will go great for you. You'll be happy and stuff like that. But sometimes when you go by the flesh, things don't go well. Well, most of the time. But if you go by God, 100%, I guarantee you, it's going to be great than what you did for the flesh. You be guided by the Holy Spirit and you do what God wants you to do, God be happy. And you'll be happy as well because... Whatever you do for God that God tells you to do is for the good. But if you do what you want to do, God don't like that. You got to do what God wants because he's our Lord and Savior. He's our king. He's our king. He's He's in charge of all nations, okay? He's in charge of the whole entire world. That's that's our king right there. Our Lord and Savior is God. Our Lord, man. And like I said, the Holy Spirit is, is three in one. It's the, it's the Son, Jesus Christ. The, the Father, the Lord, and the Holy Spirit. The Father, not even, like, God, he could come any day. And not even Jesus knows, his son. Only God knows, the Father knows. But anyways, that this was a good world. And it's not only, it says, be blessed. Then on verse 3, they themselves will be wealthy. It's not only about wealthy. Wealthy could not only be about money. It could be wealthy in, like, Christ, like, you know, you're wealthy in Christ. It doesn't have to be materialistic things wealthy, like wealthy with a lot of money. It's talking about wealth with Christ. Whatever God gives you, that's wealth. Even if it's one thing that God gives you, that's worth something because God gave it to you and he let you have it. And also, this um, Psalms 112 is also saying that there, there are people, people that do good deeds, right? Will last forever. Light shines in the darkness. People that's godly are light shines in the darkness. As of right now, we we live in a crisis with COVID-19. People were saying, this is darkness. We got to stay in our homes. This, this, that, that. But this is this this is all for the good. God is going to bring something good out of, the, out of this COVID-19. And not only that, he's going to, the people that, you know, serve God and stuff and do good deeds and, you know, do what God, do God's will, they will light shine in the darkness where people need help. And like, yeah, it says light shines in the darkness for the godly. They are generous, compassionate, and righteous. That's that's good. Good comes to those who lend money generously. It, it could be money. It could be anything, like I said. And conduct their business fairly. Do things fairly. 
do things fairly for God, do things fairly amongst others. And they do not fear the bad news. When COVID-19 happened, don't get me wrong, I, Jaden, I feared, okay? I feared it because I didn't want to get it. But now I don't feel the COVID-19 as much like I did before. Because what feared me was me hearing the news and hearing other people telling me. But I don't feel the COVID-19 no more. It's, it's, it's good to be precautious and wear gloves and masks and stuff like that and six feet distance. But I don't fear it like I first feared it when they first closed school in March. I don't fear it that much because I trust in the Lord that he, he will protect me. And if I do get the COVID-19, I trust in the Lord that he will cure me from it. Amen. Amen. That's you got to put your trust in the Lord. Also, when it says they are confident and fearless, confident, fearless, you have the Lord. Once you have the Lord, you're going to be confident and fearless. You're not going to fear the bad news. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna pray that the bad news get better, but it's not bad news. COVID-19, it seems bad because, you know, it's a virus, but there's going to be good, something good out of it because everything that happens for a reason is for the good because God didn't let this COVID-19 just happen because it just happened. He let this happen because he knows everything. God sees everything. He knows everybody's thoughts. He knows us. He knows us than we know ourselves. So basically, God, when this COVID-19, whenever God decides to take this COVID-19 away, guess what? Praise God, glory to him, and he's going to make something good come out of the COVID-19. And that's why I'm so happy and joyful because even though I don't have school, I'm struggling in school, and a lot of people are struggling in life. You read the word of God, you pray, you have God, you have the Holy Spirit. It makes you joyful. It makes you not worry about COVID-19 as much. It makes you not worry about that. Like I said, it's good to be precautious, but it makes you not worried about, you know, not to fear things because you have the Lord. You trust in the Lord with everything. You trust in the Lord with your financial, anything, with your schooling. You trust in the Lord. The Lord will give you. The Lord will give you the wisdom and the strength to get through anything that comes through your way. And if the enemy tries to come through your way, if he tries to come through your way, guess what? You will be broken in the name of Jesus. Because with God's strength, with God's strength and his Holy Spirit guiding you, the, the devil will not touch you. He will touch you. He will touch you, try to make you leave God, try to make you not serve God. He's going to attack you. But if you put your trust in the Lord and rebuke him, guess what? The Lord is going to give you strength and you're going to rebuke the devil. And he's going he's gonna to get he's gonna get frustrated because he, he can't make you go to him. He can't make you have, you know, he can't make you have internal death to go with him. He doesn't want you to have salvation. But if you have the Lord... You rebuke what the devil tries to put in your mind, tries to put hardships, like, you know, tries to say you can't do this because discouragement comes from the devil. Anything that's negative and bad that, that, that people say things to you, you just say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus in your head, and you say, God bless them. You don't hold any grudges against nobody or whatever because the devil, he likes to attack people and he likes to separate people. That's just important to trust everything in your life with the Lord. And I'm learning that now because... I'm still young. I still got a lot to learn, but that's one thing. You got to leave your trust in the Lord with almost everything. It's going to be hard, but it's it's going to be hard. It's going to be spiritual battles, but it's worth it for your salvation. Amen? So, basically, I got from this, and when you do good deeds, and they will infill, when you do good deeds in the ending, it says on um, 9 and 10, they will sh share free and give generous, generously to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. They will have influence and honor. Then on 10 says, The wicked will see this and be infuriated. They will grind their teeth in anger. And they will sl slick, slink They will slink away their hopes toward it. So when somebody that sees you doing good for, lo for the Lord, the devil is going to use somebody. Somebody you know. Some some random person. It could be even your own family member. He's going to use them. Try to use them to go against you. Because you're doing God's work. And you're doing what God wants you to do. And the, God, the devil, he don't like that. He he wants you to serve him. He don't care about you. You know who cares about you? God. God cares about you more than anybody. More than your own family. Because he got you from, from day one. Even before you was born. He knew, he knew what you was going to become before you was in the womb. 
So that's why you, sometimes when people say, I don't know why I was born, don't say that because God has a plan for you. You just got to seek the Lord and be with him at all times. And he has a good plan for you, just like he has plans for everybody else in the world, just like he has plans for me. So that's what's very important to trust in the Lord. And when somebody attacks you for doing God's work, you rebuke in the name of Jesus. You just tell that person, God bless you. And in your head, you say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Because those people, they the devil is using them to put you down. So if you read the Bible and you talk about the word of God and you're doing good deeds from your heart, generosity from your heart that the Lord said, do this. There's going to be people that's going to be infuriated and they will grind their teeth behind behind your back and they're going to talk about you. Not even talk about you. They will grind, it, grind their teeth and get mad because you're doing something for the Lord. And 112 is saying, do good for the Lord. Do be generous. That's what they're saying. God is saying, be generous from the heart. Whatever you do, make sure it comes from your heart and make sure you're guided by the Holy Spirit and do what the Holy Spirit wants you to do and to make your heart pure so you could do good things for the Lord that what God wants you to do. And then if people come in your way, if the enemy tries to use your family members, your friends, your 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 co-workers, anybody in the world, you could be preaching the word of God in the street and then somebody comes to you and be like, starts cursing at you or saying this, that, or this is not true. You just pray and rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Because the devil, you know what the devil wants? All the devil wants is to not, he wants to take away our salvation. And all he wants to do is create division amongst the people. And when 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 the devil tries to use somebody that you know against you for you doing the the good work of God, just rebuke in the name of Jesus and pray for them, and, and then and then you know don't hold grudges, just pray for them. But God bless you guys. That's all I have to say. Ooh, that felt good. Glory to God. So we're gonna pray, and hope you guys enjoyed this Bible encouragement of Psalms one twelve. See you guys tomorrow in the next video. So let's pray. Dear Father God, we come to your presence today to thank you for the Holy Spirit guiding us and protecting us each day. Protect our families. Protect those in need. Anything that does not come from you, God, take it away. Thank you for the word today that you have given us to read for given us to read for your glory and so it could touch people's hearts and even touch my heart, Lord. Because I still have lots to learn, but I trust in the Holy Spirit to guide me and protect me wherever He, wherever it, it leads me to do. I, I thank, I thank my church. I thank everyone. I thank, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for using people on, using people in in your glory, God. I thank you for my pastor. I thank you for my teacher, my Bible studies teacher. I thank you for my family. I thank you for everyone in my life, God. I appreciate you. Hopefully there's another day tomorrow, God. And in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. See you guys in the next Bible encouragement video. This is about Psalms 112. If you guys want to read it on your own time, read it five times, whatever times you want to read it. But God is good. That's all I got to say. God bless you guys. See you guys in the next Bible encouragement video. See you guys in the next one.